Hello everyone. Welcome to our free initiative of doing complete anthropology over here. Uh, in this quest, we have reached to unit 3.2. Uh, basic thing is that 3.1 we already have complete and 3.3 we have completed already. So now it is 3.2 and this whole of a unit 3 of paper 2 will be over by this time. So this unit that is 3.2 is about caste system in India. Now caste is something which people are basically aware and no one uh, right here or anywhere in the world who is Indian is unaware about this particular thing which is caste. Now as far as caste system is considered the sort of this presence or the phenomena is it is unique and it is something which is sanctioned through the religion and is basically present in Indian subcontinent and it is unique to us. Now we have to understand uh, certain definitions which are given by scholars uh, which includes L. Krober, F. A. B. Bailey, uh, Malinowski, Cooley and etc. All these people have, uh, sorry not Malinowski, uh, Muzumdar uh, and Srinivas etc. have talk, uh, talked a lot about caste system. So uh, even this Metcalf, Charles Metcalf, uh, there are a lot of names that we'll be discussing in the further part as we move. The first definition that we are going to talk over here is A. L. Crover. Now, according to A. L. Crover, an indigenous and hereditary subdivision uh, where basically superior and inferior in the social system, uh, esteem is something that is in, has been associated with caste system. Now, uh, we understand this term social stratification. Now, what do I mean by social stratification is that this is a society. Here is Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra and untouchable. This is a social stratification. This is a religious purity. As we move upward, religious purity increases. And as we move downward, pollution increases. Now, this is something which is sanctioned by the so-called in sacred complex we have discussed the religious uh, specialities so these are being sanctioned by religious specialities social stratification was itself a topic in 2021 upsc mains optional this particular topic uh, has already been covered so you can see that this Social stratification is not into the discussion till 2024 or 2025. So you can simply eliminate. Now, let me tell you something about anthropology. If you discuss anthropology, it is much of not more than 350 standard questions which will be asked. Except for two to three questions which UPSC put as a googly. Okay, except just a minute. Except some uh, two to three question which UPSC use at Google all these 350 questions are certain questions that comes in the examination of these 350 questions UPC uh, asks around say 38 question in one year okay from one paper if we move in this way 38 questions around comes in one paper and around say 78 questions are being discussed in one year for two year if we consider it becomes nearly uh, 150 questions so out of 350 150 is gone and only 200 questions are remaining from which our UPC paper will be set so we have to focus on these UPC the 200 questions that UPC is going to ask now according to L. Kroper caste is basically endogamous what do I mean by endogamous is uh, there is endogamous and exogamous if this is something of a group okay like this is these are the member of group and this is another group this is b this is a so if this there are marriages between these people of this group we call it as endogamous okay so this will be like this but if a member from this group and if this group are allowed then it becomes exogamous marriage so l Krober uh, basically has said that caste system is endogamous okay so if a person is of one caste say for example caste a then that person will be able to marry in his own caste. Next it is hereditary. 
What do I mean by hereditary is that if a person is uh, born in caste A, his child will also belong to the caste A itself. And it is basically a subdivision and the superiority and inferiority is associated with social system. Basically, social respect is associated with this particular thing. Next is social stratification by birth. Okay. Okay. So, this is the next topic is social uh, uh, stratification by birth and then social group within a society. So, basically, if we go to any village, we find that there are bastis. Like, uh, for example, this is a group where caste A is mostly don dominated in a village. This is a group where caste B is dominated. This is an area where both A and B are dominated. So social groups even and this is a complete village. So in the complete village you will find that this group itself lives as a social group. Cooley has said that caste system is basically hereditary class. So they have called that hereditary class as caste system. Hereditary class as a caste. Okay. So caste is basically a closed social group which has been said by D.N. Mazumdar. Now you have to write down the name, you have to write down the scholars and you have to write down the definition. Uh, this is something which is important because when you will be searching some content you will find that on caste system there is infinite amount of material which are which is there. As far as we are concerned we need to make sure that we have enough content so that we can tackle any questions if is being asked on caste system. So caste, we have discussed the Al Kruber, okay. Then uh, we have discussed the Kuli and now DN Mazumdar, okay. So DN Mazumdar simply says that caste is nothing but a closed social group. Now we have to understand this particular thing that if we are moving forward with this idea, then this is something that we need to do, okay. Characteristics of a caste. So if anything, if a question comes, then we should be able to write this thing. It is important. Either you write it in a point base or you just write it as characteristic of caste and then you do this. This is something which is everyone's favorite. Okay. Now we are going to discuss each one of the characteristics of caste. The first is ascribed. Ascribed, it means by birth that if a person belongs to caste A, his child will also belong to caste A, its grandchild will also belong to caste A and we are talking about male line, okay, not the female line, okay, just male line. Ascribe, you have understood that this is basically a system which is restrictive of marriage. Uh, we already have mentioned that there is an endogamy. Endogamy means basically a marriage within its own group. So if there are uh, certain groups in a society, uh, any group it can be, so there will be a certain restriction that people will give preference to his own caste, her own caste, her parents will be like, we want our child to get married in our own caste. That is the endogamy. Next is division. So uh, we already have discussed this, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, these are an untouchable, these are the divisions and among uh, if we move to a particular section, we find that there are a lot of divisions there also. Next is hierarchy. Hierarchy, we already have talked that Brahmins are on the top, then Kshatriya, then Vaishya, then Shudra and then Untouchables. So these are basically the hierarchy. Commensality. What do I mean by commensality is basically roti biti samband. Take it. That I, can I eat my food with you? Can A eat its food with B? If both are the member of same strata, yes, they can. But if A and B, if this is a case that A belongs to upper strata and B belongs to a lower strata, then it is not something which is uh, which will be acceptable to A. No issues with B, but it will not be acceptable to A. Next is association. Uh, you people have understand that uh, there are groups like uh, for example, I don't want to offend anyone, but just take it as an example. Um, if there is a cobbler, okay. So this is something of a occupation, right? And mostly this is uh, associated with a caste, right? If I uh, went to certain section where there is a uh, work on uh, this 
I'm not able to recall uh, it. We call it a chamars. Okay, so basically these are certain association which is associated with certain things. Uh, there are people, for example, some castes are associated with liquor, traditional liquors. Okay, uh, some are traditional salt. Some people are basically the uh, any sort of thing which which comes as an association. They have formed the guild. Then we know the purity and pollution we have discussed. Customs we know that a certain sect of people have certain things, certain uh, practices that are being performed when a person reaches to a particular height. The next is the component of caste. Now, what are the components of caste? What are the things? What do you, I mean by it? The first thing is hierarchy. Varna hierarchy. Now, Varna is uh, something we start with Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, and Untouchable. And this is a triangle. This is a diagram that one has to make. These three groups, that is one, two, and three, are Dvija. What do I mean by Dvija? Is these are twice born. Now, uh, that is something which is debatable, and we are not going to discuss it uh, because it is completely irrelevant, useless. Here, as of now, what are the components? These are the components. Twice born, done. Then, uh, once if someone moves the down, purity decreases and pollution increases. What are the component of caste? Varna, Jati, Gotra, and Jajmani. Now, what do I mean by Varna? Varna, these are fourfold ancient Hindu uh, thing, which was good or bad. It only was a specification, classification that a person uh, is given uh, given place into Varna based on his profession, and profession was something which a person can, could change. So that was not something which was exploited. To it converted to Jati. We call it as a caste, and that thing become ascribed means a person born in a caste will die in a caste, right? So that is something which is exploitative because if, uh, as of now, I am a teacher, so uh, according to Varna, I would be Brahmin. But if we move to another part, then if I'm I become a doctor, then I I can become uh, Shatriya. If I uh, sorry Vaishya, if I am someone who is serving the country in army, then I become Shatriya, right? So this is something uh, of a thing. When it comes to Varna, but Jati is something which is based upon my own existence. When it comes to our uh, whatever the history it is, Gotra is something comes from a word as a cow pain. Now this is something where the cows used to be placed, and people usually uh, possess Gotra exogamy because they think that Gotra is something uh, which is a sort of a family. Like I would if. I can't mar marry in a same Gotra. Gotra uh, means if that is the case, then I personally will be like a brother sister sort of a relationship, and that is not something which is acceptable when it comes to marriage. Jajmani is a most important topic here. We'll be discuss uh, to it in a separate time, and that is something which is important because uh, we are going to talk about it. Next is origin. Now this is one of the very important topic. It can simply come for ten marker. And uh, there are certain theories as far as the origin is concerned. All right, now the first is traditional theory. Now traditional theory is uh, a theory which says that uh, the origin of caste system is from Brahma. Okay, now this is a Brahma. So from his head came Brahmin. From his shoulder came Shatriya. From his thighs came Vaishya. From his feet came. Shudra. So this is something was a traditional theory of uh, Brahma body, which was criticized by Srinivas. Even I criticize it. Even everyone who is rational enough will criticize this thing because this is irrelevant and just a self-serving theory. Next is racial theory, which was given by Riesle, which is mostly accepted. Uh, it has been criticized by Hutton, but we'll know why. So first racial theory was given by Riesle. So he says that anulom and pratilom, these are basically a type of marriage. Okay, if a, a girl from say higher caste, okay, uh, she if a Brahmin girl, for example, marries a Vaishya boy, okay, anulom. Uh, pratilom is something which is uh, sorry, this is opposite. What I was trying to do here is pratilom is something if a Brahmin girl is marrying to say Shudra boy. This is pratilom, which is not 
एक्सेप्टेड देन अनुलोम इज इफ अ ब्राह्मीण बॉय इज मैरिंग टू से वैश्य गर्ल तो दिस इज अनुलोम मीन्स हायर गर्ल अ गर्ल ऑफ अ हायर क्लास कास्ट शुड नॉट मैरी टू अ लोअर कास्ट प्रतिलोम मैन ऑफ हायर क्लास कास्ट कैन मैरी अ गर्ल फ्रॉम लोअर कास्ट अनुलोम Even Gore and Westermark, these are names you are going to write it down. Even these scholars, you are going to write it down on the last page of your book. All the scholars that we are putting, so that whenever you are revising, you should know that if I am talking about Gore, you can say that okay, Gore and Westermark has supported Riesle's theory. So that is something which can come. Next is occupational theory. Uh, before that, criticism. Now Riesle said that anulom and pratilom is basically a reason. Now why it is so? सी हियर दिस इज अ डायग्राम ओके ब्राह्मीण क्षत्रिय वैश्य एंड शूद्र नौ इफ अ ब्राह्मीण मैरिड अ ब्राह्मीण हिल स्टे ब्राह्मीण ओके इफ अम इफ दैट थिंग इज देयर बट इफ अ ब्राह्मीण इज मैरिंग क्षत्रिय देन वेयर शुड वी पुट हिम शुड वी पुट हिम इन ब्राह्मीण और शुड वी पुट हिम क्षत्रिय बिकॉज द चिल्ड्रेन विच विल बी बॉर्न टू देम विल बी समवेयर बिटवीन so now these will be brahmin if from descended from male family it will be brahmin but they'll be given low status in the brahmin so uh, there are people that you know even in a same if you go to shudra you'll see that there are certain people who are shudra there are certain people are shudra for these three he is shudra but for them we are different from these people so that is something which happens and riesle said that anulom even when kshatriya and vaishya both married the child was somewhere between so If it was male over here, that Shatriya male, so the place was given at the bottom of Shatriya. But it was criticized by Hutton. Hutton says that endogamy and exogamy was responsible, and uh, even that is not false. If uh, the thing is, racial theory of Rizle, anulom and pratilom, type of marriage, and even endogamy and exogamy uh, are also similar sort of institution. So this is much of an accepted theory. डेट क्वेश्चन कैन कम रीजले रेशल थियरी रेशल थियरी विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम टेन मार्कर्स सो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू राइट यू हैव टू राइट अनोन प्रतिरम एंड ऑल्सो क्रिटिसम बाय हटन देन ऑक्यूपेशनल थियरी बाय नेस्फेल्ड ऑक्यूपेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोटेक्ट द ओन जॉब्स इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोटेक्ट द ओन सर्विस इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोटेक्ट द ओन ऑक्यूपेशन दिस ऑक्यूपेशनल थियरी के सो सर्टन सेट ऑफ पीपल हु आर डूइंग सर्टन थिंग दे डिसाइडेड दैट all uh, their traditional wisdom that they have gathered will be among themselves and they'll not share with anyone and then this is something that you know all the marriage relation will be between these people so occupational theory then mana theory now this is a certain sort of thing mana is something uh, is that you understand this in a such a way that mana is basically a sort of a power assume that mana is sort of a power now cycle has a mana then bike has bigger mana then car has bigger mana then say uh, this uh, move, earth moving trucks have bigger mana then this commercial jet have bigger mana and then god knows what but has a bigger mana so mana is something which is increasing in this way so this is basically the purity so the way purity increases the mana increases so purity is directly proportional to mana so this is basically brahmins mana kshatriyas mana vaishyas mana shudras and untouchables basically they don't even have a mana according to this particular thing next is multiple factor theory this is this was given by sc roy now who sc roy was we will de deal in fourth chapter where we will be discussing about the scholars incredible personalities and uh, what do i say about them they have been the reason that we are studying anthropology so multiple factor theory was given by sir he said that there was difference between racial uh, differences geographical dis, uh, differences mana purity manipulation by brahmin these were the reasons as far as the existence of caste system was concerned then guild theory basically the occupational theory that we can say guilds means basically organization where people work now as i told you the jajmani system jajmani system is the most important topic you are going to write it down because unit 3 is something that every year there will be question undoubtedly there will be a question on this unit 
and Jajmani system is not an uh, exception to it and it, it will be appearing in your exam some more the other way. What do I mean by Jajmani system? So you have to understand that Jajmani is basically the exchange okay that I am giving you knowledge and you will give me money. This is sort of a relation that we have just assume so if we uh, take this relationship and spread it over a global uh, case we understand that what do i need okay i need someone to wash my clothes i need someone to trim my bed and give me a good haircut i need someone to uh, give me food i need someone to do some rituals at my house i want uh, someone to work at my gardens so if this is thing i cannot do everything but what, there is something that I can do. What I can do, I can teach, for example. So this is what I can do. This is what a service that I would offer. And in exchange, other people will offer me that thing. For example, if I'll, I'm an English teacher, for example, and I'll teach your children English. So what is your uh, father's profession? So let us assume that the personality, uh, that person uh, is a dhobi, okay? Is someone who wash is a washerman so i would uh, request him that uh, i will teach your child uh, the education i'll give him the education and in exchange you will basically uh, do the laundry for me so this is basically the exchange system when it comes to judge money now is it only limited to goods yes is it limited to exchange uh, service yes it is not just limited to goods it is it covers both goods as well as services for example there are kumar kumars they'll make you pots okay then lohars they'll give you good hammer then telis they'll make you oil okay then nai will definitely give you a good haircut dobe will do your laundry so this is a certain sort of a exchange that happens but teli can make oil can he wash the clothes yes can he do haircut that is debatable can he do iron smith work debatable can he do Kumar work debatable, but the thing is we need someone to have specialist. So this Kumar, Kumar, Lohar, Teli, Nai, Kunbi, we can understand this by occupational theory, by Nesfeld, right? Or guild theory. Now this Kumars will make a guild, okay? Occupational or guild theory, and this Kumar will make guild, and now in a guild they'll limit their technology to themselves. Now. We understand that there is something that everything goes. There is lo lower caste and there is higher caste. Now lower caste will provide services to higher caste. And in exchange higher caste will provide goods to lower caste. For example they will provide grains. They will provide clothes. Okay. They will provide say any sort of food if they are making. Okay. What the lower caste will provide them they'll provide their labor and apart from that the other services now as of now if we are living a, a living in an egalitarian society everything seems so good that uh, we are doing for others others are doing things for us we are very you know happy jolly society but that is not the thing which is there right this this thing has become exploitative, extremely exploitative. People think that the higher caste basically think that they have become superior. Can we doubt? Uh, can we have play a question answer with them? Yes, we can. But that is something which can't uh, be won because that is something a traditional mentality is over there. When it comes to lower caste, this this spine, that this back spine has been you know. We can call it as it has bent over uh, the years. So it's like my bab type of administration has been basically started. The judgment, uh, those who are offered service or the person who take advantage of service is judgment. The provide who or the person who provides it, they're called as kameen or kameen, basically kameen, which is a, der a derogatory term and which should not have been there but that is something which is happening so we have to understand that this word highlights the mentality of people now if you move forward we have to understand there are certain characteristics which are associated with the okay so there is certain sort of a thing okay just a minute Okay, 
So what are the characteristics as far as the Jajmani system is concerned? So first it is hereditary. Uh, as caste system has strengthened the Jajmani system. So if a person is born, a washerman will die as a washerman in a caste system. So it is hereditary that A is child, A dash, A double dash, A triple dash and A to the dash of N will become the same it will be the same caste religious sanction this is the worst part about it Jajmani system in itself is good it is not bad even Gandhi ji had uh, has someone uh, who has no objection to this particular thing but this is something which is misused abused and uh, it shows as a human how degraded we have become when it comes to not respecting others human right so it is religiously sanctioned that is the worst part about it the next is uh, it provides security of occupation because uh, for example a and b if these are this is the upper caste person this is the lower caste person he offers him service and he offers him good so the thing is for a he cannot fire b okay but b can fire a this is something which is there so here a b is having a security of occupation then he has a stability of stabilizing mechanism for example b has to be someone who have to rest assured that he'll get grains he'll get everything at the end of his year, year's bargain right then there is a social harmony it is something which is limited in theory okay it is not something which is there in a practical approach a social Harmony is there in theory, undoubtedly it is. But definitely when it comes to practical, it is exploitative. Next is traditionally accepted. This is something which is traditionally accepted. And that is also one of the worst part about it. What are the advantages? This is important. We are doing it in a question answer format also. So you can write it in the same way. Security of service security of economy and close personal relationship what is the uh, disadvantage see you have to write this name of two people Mazumdar and Oscar Levy these people have studied and they have concluded that the judgment system is degraded disintegrated exploitative discriminative harassment of the lower and inferior treatment to the lower caste as far as the judgment system is concerned so this is something which is the worst thing which can happen to you what are the factors which has caused the disintegration of the particular judgment system first is modernization of course second is westernization what is modernization we become modern we understand that uh, if i am someone who was born in for example say caste a but my interest is something which is of caste b so can i move it yes for example i may be a, a born brahmin but then i want to put a showroom for shoes okay i want to put a showroom for nike okay and reebok for example so does that mean that i'll have to change my caste and do all this thing no that is not something that i want with modernization comes maturity and that is limited okay that is not something that every uh, modern person comes with maturity that is not a thing next is westernization so uh, with colonization this thing started right so with colonization uh, this britishers we and started copying them okay their tradition their culture and that is how we broke all the caste barriers in a limited amount but that is also one of the way one of the factor which was responsible as far as the uh, things are concerned next is education so uh, for example the shining example of it is dr b r ambedkar so dr b r ambedkar is a shining example of this particular thing called as education he took his uh, education and then he he fought for you know millions of people who were downtrodden and they needed help so that is something employment opportunity so uh, if a person uh, was moving from a uh, uh, say town to city so when he was moving to town to city in city there were a lot of employment opportunities 
and that were not limited to uh, just any caste it was open to all so that is one good thing then urbanization is one of the reason industrialization uh, is one of the reason land fragmentation earlier this a to b relation that i have talked a was having uh, a very you know big sort of land 50 acre land 350 acre 300 acre land 100 acre land but with land fragmentation these this uh, traditional land uh, landlord uh, people are only limited to 10 acres of land okay this is something that they, these people are now going for the just subsistence so that is one of the reason average la land holding in india is i think 0.13 hectares it has came down to that then manufactured good earlier uh, uh, you have to go to a naive for example a hairstyle uh, today this hairstylist has become a profession and people want to be become a hairstylist why because this is something which gives us extremely good amount of money and people wants to do it as a career they perceive it that is it then cash cropping has changed so people are not you know anymore they would buy a manufactured good and they will go for cash cropping thus this money system will come to halt some case studies on judge money system william weiser as we have talked uh, about he has given this exploitative nature of judge money system so he have given a book called as the hindu judge money system william weiser has given uh, written this book the hindu judge money system in the year 1936 oscar lewis and dian majundar has also contributed uh, to judge money system as we have discussed they also have shown the exploitativeness of the judge money system next topic over here is dominant caste what do i mean by dominant caste is uh say for example okay. so for example this is our india so even if uh, you move to maharashtra you will find that marathas are basically dominant okay from if it is maharashtra people will hear news from maratha if we move to this western up or this sort of uh, haryana wagaira this northern part there is dominant called as jats are there which are dominant if uh, we move to andhra we'll find reddies are uh, somewhat dominating uh, thing uh, so this dominant even in up when elections are here or there there are i think yadavs so this is something uh, we call them as the dominant caste there are certain characteristics which are associated with dominant caste first is education education is something which will uh, put anyone on the map right so education will uh, help a person move in a get job in administrator shun teaching and that is something uh, people will you know if a person from a lower caste comes up and set an right example people wants to follow it so, and a lot of people follow it and the person who is educated will definitely have better earning and that earning will definitely leads to a uh, improved standard of living and that is something which will attract other people as well so this is one thing education next is land it is most important thing right now even today so land is something which is very important and very very important so uh, according to this this if we uh, study this thing people need to have some acre of land in order to be dominant caste then higher social position for example uh, yadavs reddies jats maratha these uh, are from the dwija community okay we have rare example or no example of dominant caste at a regional level as a, a you know very uh, sort of a big layer where there are, is a shudra dominant caste so that is not something it has to be from dwija community dwija community are twice brown born brahmin kshatriya vaishya then there should be political cloud you know uh, in maharashtra there is you know maratha uh, let things happens over here so that is something even when uh, politics are hit up 
there is always a uh, talking of yadav votes that is basically the political clock then numerical now this is very important because our democracy is all about number those people who have number can do anything for example if tomorrow uh, i have the majority say for example there are 545 seats and i have majority of 500 people so virtually and practically i can do anything in this country that i want i can uh, be the person who can make free education complete uh, free education for everyone complete healthcare free for everyone so if any government is saying that we don't have money that is something uh, which is like a private wale nahi kar rahe the private uh, people fund this political parties and in exchange political parties do not do any revolutionary step as far as the health is concerned because if they, they take care of it then we won't go to a private institution we will go to government hospital so the thing is that government other people in government do not and never will do this thing that is one honest opinion next is job in administration so we know that whenever we go to an, any office we find someone our friend or someone belongs to you know person like us that is something dominant caste dominant uh, mn shrinivas if the question comes you have to understand that it was mn shrinivas mn shrinivas has given this concept of dominant caste and uh, the book that he had written was dominant caste of rampura in the year 1959 he also has written essay which was titled as social system of mysore village social system of mysore village you have to understand you have to write it down because if a question comes on dominant caste you have to write this thing book that is dominant caste of rampura essay titled social system of mysore village and that studied okaliga community okaliga community and they were the thing dominating now next is characteristics characteristics we already have discussed should have the land education job in administration numerical thing political clout and higher social position role what is the role of dominant caste now dominant caste act as a reference model what do i mean by reference model is that if a person is born shudra he wants to move upward and he uh, upward and he wants to be like a kshatriya so what do kshatriya does for example uh, he wants to be a brahmin what brahmins are brahmins are basically if uh, tentatively speaking with a, these are veg these follow customs these follow traditions these have some taboos etc okay they don't consume liquor this is something a traditional brahmin is shudra they uh, they does everything so what uh this people will do they'll give up the meat they'll give up drinking they'll uh, accept the customs they'll accept the brahmin services and after one or two generation they'll not become a brahmin but in shudra they'll be get getting a better position that is the reference model so brahmin caste act as a reference model it also plays a role in dispute re- resolution because this dominant caste uh, also work as a big man ठीक है सो दिस बिग मैन विल डेफिनेटली यू नो टेक दिस रेजोल्यूशन फॉरवर्ड एंड वर्क हार्ट नेक्स्ट इज वॉच डॉग ऑफ प्लूरिस्टिक कल्चर सो डोमिनेंट कास्ट इज सम वन हु अंडरस्टैंड ओके ही इज बेसिकली सम वन हु इज इन मेजोरिटी सो ही इज सम वन हु एक्ट इज अ वॉच डॉग ही कीप्स क्लोज आई ऑन दिस प्लूरल कल्चर एंड देन देर इज अ पावर होल्डिंग सो दिस पीपल इज डेफिनेटली सम वन विल बी होल्डिंग द पावर next is political struggle okay just a minute okay so uh, there are people they'll be power holding okay then watch dog of the plural culture these are traditional power holder then political struggles for the power that is continue okay because even if uh, in maharashtra if say there have been for example 25 cm only one of them have been out of this 24 only one has been from other caste the 24 are either brahmin or kshatriya basically not even kshatriya you can say either it was brahmin or it was maratha so this is something about maharashtra so political struggle for more now these people two two people will also go for political power more and more 
then there is a social superiority complex that we are better we are you know arrogant sort of attitude is there mostly and there there is this social uh, superiority feeling when it comes to a person belongs to dominant caste for example if you move to uh, any state they will be like हमारे इनको पावर में आने आ जाने दो हम बता देंगे आपको राइट लेट माई मैन कम इन पावर एंड आई टेल यू वट आई एम सो दैट इज बेसिकली द सोशल सिक्योरिटी सुपेरिटी कॉम्प्लेक्स देन देर इज अ कास्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स देर विल बी अ कास्ट कॉम्प्लेक्ट ओके नो वट डू आई मीन बाई कास्ट कॉम्प्लेक्ट इज अ सिंपल फैक्ट दैट पीपल वॉन्ट पीपल आर एस्पिरेश दे हैव एस्पिरेशन दे वॉन्ट टू मूव फॉरवर्ड इन द लेडर एंड दे आर गोइंग टू मूव सो फॉर दैट दे विल हैव टू स्टेप ऑन सम सॉर्ट ऑफ पीपल and that will generate the caste conflict for example hundreds of are there there was bima koregao incidents where um, that is something which is there then caste studies case studies have been done by kl sharma kl sharma has studied the uh, dominant caste which is brahmin near kanpur and wiser he studied karim karimpura okay and brahmins they were basically dominant caste because of land holding oscar levis oscar levis sorry they said the dominant uh, dc that is dominant caste are jats in western up and these are dominant over brahmin but if there are jats over here karimpur or uh, kanpur then that is not something which is a dominant caste here brahmins are dominant caste esidu be is one of the scholars question have been asked on sc dobe 2021 uh we can go and check it out and we'll be doing individual uh, series even bk roy burman i had written an answer to it it was i think 2021 bk roy burman or it was 2020 just make sure that the one of them your question was here so what sc dobe he criticized this thing he says that it is dominant individual and not dominant caste he said it was dominant individual and not dominant caste for example in maharashtra there may be maratha as a dc but are all maratha the dc no it is not the case okay few marathas are holding power the rest are not and hence they went for this obc reservation that they wanted so they went for not ews but they want maratha erection so that is something uh, is a reality so as you do say it's not any dominant caste it is dominant individual he said he also added that it is a local phenomena that is a it's not a regional phenomena or very a phenomena on a bigger scale it is just a village level or you know town level phenomena bk royman uh, berman said that some members of dominant caste are more dominant that is uh, a true fact because even if there is a room filled with 100 people uh not all of them are going to be similar there are this some people who are more um uh, we say dominant than others and that is what the bk roy berman said now if we move forward and understand what is going to be the future of caste system now if a question comes it will be for uh, if i'm not wrong this question can come with another question for 15 to 20 mark and this can be a supplementary thing like 10 marker to that question only what is the future of caste system so you go with a definition caste system of el krober go by kuli or by muzumdar or by fp belly this definition of fp belly will be discussing when we will be concluding this chapter so either go with this this or this three definition then you have to write the characteristics of caste system which is endogamous hier- uh, hierarchy social stratification hereditary uh, c- rules of commensality ex- uh, immensality etc this comes under characteristics now there are three schools and these three schools are basically three views as per as the caste system future of caste system is concerned now as a person what do you want what do you think should happen to caste system first thing which comes to your mind is everything is going fine let it be we are not going to you know disc- uh, we are not going to uh, change it the way it is going it is fine all right no issues with that next what do you think second what is your sup- second opinion i think it should be you know just struck down completely out no caste only one caste indian 
वेरी गुड ओपिनियन ओके बट नॉट प्रैक्टिकल टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट थर्ड लेट्स ब्रिंग बैक दी वर्ना सिस्टम और इट विच वॉज देयर इन एंशंट इंडिया योर वर्ना विल बी बेसिकली डिपेंडिंग अपॉन योर प्रोफेशन दैट इज समथिंग विच इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेड टू दी पीपल हु आर सिटिंग इन द हायर प्लेस बिकॉज वी हैव पुत्र प्रेम इन इंडिया दैट पीपल आर समन हु लव देर चिल्ड्रेन एंड दे वॉन्ट्स द चिल्ड्रेन टू इनहेरिट वट दे हैव मेनी अ टाइम पीपल डू अक्यूमुलेट सिग्निफिकेंट अमाउंट ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी इन लाइफ बट समटाइम्स दे डोंट सो दे वॉन्ट टू गिव दैम समथिंग कास्ट इज समथिंग विच दे प्रोवाइड सो दैट इज द थ्री स्कूल्स देर इज मार्शल राव एंड टॉयन बी टॉयन बी राव एंड मार्शल these have evaluated the three schools and they have concluded that none of them are 100% practical they say it's impractical none of them is like 100% practical all these three are someone who are having the pros and cons and even if we decide to think about it what will happen to untouchables because in the varna system there are four varna चतुर्वर्ण वी से राइट चतुर मीन्स फोर ब्राह्मीण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र वॉट हैपन्स टू अनटचेबल जेन्युन क्वेश्चन देन देर इज दिस कास्ट पेट्रियोटिज्म नाउ ड्यू टू वोट बैंक पॉलिटिक्स दैट इवन वेन यू स्टडी इलेक्शन ऑफ यूपी द पीपल आर लाइक देर इज यादव वोट देन देर इज कुर्मी वोट there is teli vote okay so this is something that they say so if political people are doing their vote bank calculation the thing that i'm sure is that caste is not going to be vanished in a long period of time so according to dn mazumdar says that caste system is like a broken finger and only that thing should be taken out okay not the whole system because only if you have problem in your little finger you chop the finger not the whole hand that is what the dn mujumdar says that if you have a problem with your finger chop it out don't take the whole hand you know down that is something dn mujumdar have said next is max muller what do max muller says is that caste system should be abolished max muller says that caste system should be abolished start forward end of the discussion then the, there is narma uh, narmadeshwar prasad he says He has basically studied three area: industrial, rural, and non-industrial. So he says that, all right, caste is there, but caste is something which is losing its relevance now. So it says he says that remedies are basically there which are weakening the caste system. So what are the things which are weakening caste system? Education, definitely. so it's not like you have heard that dialogue ki raja ka beta raja nahi banega jo kabhi log ho wo raja banega so this education is this thing which defines someone's kabiliyat so this is one thing education next is opportunity you have to be at a right place at right time there are a lot of people who are on right spot but on a wrong time so opportunity is also something which we have to grab it by both hand and hence we have to be on a place where opportunities are hanging low intercaste marriages are happening love marriages are increasing people are not thinking about the castes before they are you know falling in love and getting married so this is one of the reason then even constitution prevention of atrocity prevention of civil uh, protection of civil liberties Uh, abolition of untouchabilities these acts have been passed by parliament which have you know is helped country establish equality the last topic on this is tribe caste continuum tribe caste continuum what do i mean by tribe and caste these are two ends okay this one and this is if here is a tribe here is a caste the tribe caste continuum we have derived it from robert redfield robert redfield 
and he has given this concept of folk urban culture so according to robert redfield uh, he has discussed this uh, folk urban culture in study of yucatan uh, when he was doing his study in, in and around mexico central america that have been taken and now have been shifted to tribe caste continuum now what are tribes tribes are people who are mis- basically as isolated shy simple backward and mostly practice the subsistence economy caste is definitely a social institution these are not shy these are overt okay not covert like ca- tribe this is very complex institution then uh, you see that uh, the way here in a tribe there is backwardness and subsistence that is not the case caste is a self sufficient mechanism and that is the something which happens next is due to uh, the factors like modernization westernization education urbanization industrialization and uh, growth of consciousness constitution laws human rights and uh, civil liberty civil liberty movement the boundaries are basically diminishing between the two the main reason is the cultural contact is increasing earlier there were tribe this was tribe this was caste now uh, i would just take this thing and you will understand it in a better way earlier this was tribe and this was caste then the ta- tribe and caste there was a boundary between them okay now this people there's a expansion of here expansion from here okay somewhere there was a connection and now this is a good area okay tribe caste tribe caste so you you can understand right now what do i mean by continuum that is tribe and caste is basically are merging and fusing that is something tribe caste continuum according to gore gore says that tribal are nothing but backward hindus so tribals are nothing but backward hindus that is something which was said by gore next if we move forward we have to understand that there are certain similarities and certain differences as far as the caste system tribe and caste are concerned marriage in caste is basically endogamy endogamous right and you have to marry outside your gotra you can't marry in your gotra because then that will be a marriage sort of a brother and sister marriage right so marriage within a clan is also forbidden as far as the tribes is concerned so similarly marriage is prohibited in caste same gotra then tribals they speak regional languages right now uh, the tribals for example i live in certain place a uh, which are associated with gonds gond people so now uh, gonds they do speak marathi they speak hindi and they speak gondi so they do speak all the three languages even people from here who are living in the fringes they understand gondi they speak marathi and hindi and gujarati all right so this is something that is there then caste has occupied you know certain village whole as a tribe for example you might have seen a village where you will find one caste in complete village so if you move to a tribe you will find one complete tribe in a certain region if we move and see some differences between them max weber says that tribe is local group whereas caste is a social group beautiful difference that has been pointed by max weber he says that tribal is a local group and caste is a social group mazumdar he says that true to tribe rituals are foreign but it is necessary for caste for tribals rituals are foreign but for caste it is part of religion and caste is basically stratified and tribe is egalitarian so these are certain definitions when it comes to thing you have to write it down when the question comes on this particular topic of tribe cost continuum now the next and last topic which was basically some part were remaining that will be discussed and the unit will be done fg bailey 
what fg billy has said is that in his book tribe caste and nation as the study of political activity and political change now according to fg billy book that he has written it is that the study of caste and nation study of political activity and political change tribe caste and nation a study of the political activity and political change this concept as i have told you is inspired by robert redfield folk urban continuum okay the next thing uh, i already have uh, said that this is the study of yucatan okay from study of yucatan then merida and etc are there you can do it from any standard book is the same okay but you have to understand i'll in last i'll give you a local example so that you can never forget it okay so next and the last topic over here is this so the continuum basically is interaction continuum is basically interaction between greater tradition and uh, lesser tradition what do i mean by greater tradition and little tradition we are going to discuss over here now continuum is interaction and as we have done between tribe and caste this interaction happens between great tradition and little tradition now if we move to say uh recently i have moved uh, had gone to mathura so the re- religion there was organized educated there was texts okay uh there were people sac- uh, you know there were sacred things sacred places there was infrastructure and the dt was elaborately decorated and worship little tradition it is illiterate part of illiterate uh, culture it is local okay uh, here the texts are not there or texts are missing and uh, even profane things become part of the thing but if a person from little tradition if for example this person a goes to this place b so he goes over here and he learns things and he come back over here and then he adds this thing to his puja for example earlier there was a havan okay just assume this thing this is just your uh, i am i understand that this is very poor diagram but okay so assume that this is a havan okay so earlier in this havan uh, people were putting ghee okay now this person a Who, where he used to put ghee he went to greater tradition and he learns that with ghee you have to even add good or we can say jaggery so now he comes back he make uh, some you know a fine crust of jaggery and then he adds along with it in this havan and then person c d e f sees this thing and they also adopt to this thing so that is something that is a part of a greater tradition and we learn from it so we call it as a parochialization parochialization like percolation of water so this parochialization if this thing is coming down so we are learning now what happens is that there is a local tradition okay there is a local god and that god is being worshiped and this god is being worshiped uh, his is getting famous the deity is getting famous so this greater tradition will accept him it and now that greater tradition have accepted unit from uh, little tradition we call it as a universalization for example vaishno devi now vaishno devi is something which is limited to a certain town but now it has been universalized and has been designated as an incarnation of certain thing uh, even buddha lord buddha is someone who was a part of a little tradition okay not part of a great tradition but now buddha is incorporated into hinduism as a uh, avatar of uh, vishnu 2019 upsc question 
paper 2019 or 2020 UPSC question paper you can go and see this question was asked so this is something that we have to understand next is the last topic that I want to put to the example this is a tribe and this is a caste now here there is for example Gosain Uh, Malir basically we are talking about if you are not able to remember Malir we were doing nature man spirit complex so this is type which worship Gosain now this is a caste for example and it worship say any god uh, we take it here Krishna okay so this tribe this caste they worship Krishna now tribe is not this is a core so this core means that this place is spread like this and if it is caste means the village is something which is spread like this so this is something a region of you know collaboration between these both things, right so now this particular part will be the thing where even Gosain will be worship and Krishna Lord Krishna will also be worship so this is something that we understand by tribe caste container next thing is if we this is something that we do to understand people understand society you have to understand that if this is a bigger culture okay then with other culture it has to you know give and take a sort of relation it has to have otherwise this culture one two three will perish because you know it may happen that uh, this three will evolve from one and two and now one and two will lose their relevance and only three will prosper so this is the thing that we have to understand from there so this is all about uh, it okay uh, we have completed unit three we are moving forward slowly but before your means 2023 we will have each and every topic which will be covered from page to page so stay tuned keep your study going and in the comment box write the answers of any questions you want and if you want me to evaluate it i'll do it for you so take care have a good day see you soon